welcome to all who have come this evening to uh, share this experience with us. Uh, this is the 23rd, 23rd presentation, uh, and so we are pleased to have you here with us. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he had tied around them. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, you are not going to wash my feet. Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash your feet, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, do you not know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. For I have set an example for you that you also should do as I have done. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, master nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only for a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. The Gospel of the Lord. I have eagerly desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. I will not drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. I'm not referring to all of you. I know those that I have chosen. But this is to fulfill the scriptures. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. Oh no! One of us? Betray you? Expel him! Reveal his serpent! Can't be. Say that again? Simon, no! Hear him! Paru! No, not true! Remove his hands! Matthew, Thaddeus, if you know what to think about this betrayal, you better tell me now. I'm sorry, but I have a hard time believing any of us would betray Jesus. 
We've got to speak to Jesus about this. Who could he be speaking about? This betrayal is my fault, Jesus, because of you. You have taught me over the last two and a half years to become, become more compassionate, more caring towards men who do not deserve it. I don't care about secrets being kept. God knows I have my own. You keep saying, follow me, trust me. But yet, you also say you're going to a place that we cannot follow. This makes no sense. I'm still waiting to find out why you wanted me to be a part of this group. The only one that I can relate to is Judas. At least he wants to free our people from the tyranny. And Matthew, really? He's one of the tax collecting scum, robbing our people, working for the Romans. Peter, ha, you put him in charge. All he does is talk, talk, talk. He needs to put up or shut up. John and James, they have passion and desire to fight. I can teach them the way of the zealots. We can make a stand. The other men, they just follow like sheep in a pasture. Where are you leading them? Where's that fire I saw when you overturned the tables at the temple? Where's the fear in your eyes when you found out that Lazarus was dead? If you can raise your friend from the dead, you are more than capable of leveling that Roman government to the ground. Did you not see the way the people welcomed you when we came into Jerusalem? They want you to stand. They want you to fight. But no, we hide like cowards going from place to place. If you're just going to continue to talk in circles, make no sense, and confuse us all, then maybe your betrayer is I. Rabbi, betrayal? How? How can this be? Is I, Matthew, the publican tax collector? My given name was Levi, but now you call me Matthew, which means gift from God. I often wonder, why have you even chosen me? I know I'm not trusted and I'm hated. But I'm well accustomed to that treatment. In Capernaum, I had to hide in a carriage just to get to my tax booth. The driver, he wouldn't even drop me off in the square. He didn't want to be seen helping me. People would see me, and they know who I am, and they'd, they'd spit on me, they'd hit me, threaten to kill me. I mean, I, I've seen so much since I've joined you. The miracles. The, the one even before you even chose me. I was sent by the Romans to spy on Andrew and Peter. They were being accused of working on Shabbat and they owed a lot in back taxes. So I followed them. They were out all night on their boat trying to fish. They came back with nothing. You were on the shore preaching. You approached him and said, let's go back out, cast the nets again. And he's dead. When you return, I have never seen that much fish in one boat in my entire life. All their debts were paid. And that was just the first one. That was before you even chose me. Then, there was that night, rowing across the Sea of Galilee, the 12 of us, came across storms, we were taking on water, we were going nowhere fast, I thought we were all going to drown. And then you appeared from nowhere, walking on the water. And I knew at that point that you are the Messiah. There was no doubt in my mind. 
who approached us. He called out, Peter, come to me. And he did. He climbed out of the boat, started walking across the water. But then he sank because he lost his faith. He lost his faith in you. Now, I, I know the things I've done in my past that are terrible. My own mother and father have disowned me. My own brother, James Les, won't even acknowledge that he is my brother. That's okay. Like I said, I'm used to this type of treatment. But I'm just saying, with everything I've seen, your betrayer could never be I. My Lord, I don't understand. You say there's a betrayer? No. I've searched my heart and I wonder, could I be this betrayer that you speak of? I've always tried to remain faithful to the things you called me to do. You know, when we were at the wedding, they ran out of wine. And I watched you turn water into wine. That's when I knew that you were the chosen one, the Messiah. And even though your, your teachings are hard to follow and understand, you called me to follow you. And I, I dropped everything to do that. I sacrificed my family. I left everything else behind. And I will continue to do that. You know, another thing that I, I don't understand is I thought we were taking this time to deliver us from the Romans. But now, when I look at this, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen right now. Betrayal? Lord, you need to know this betrayal or betrayer could never be I. I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. Andrew, James, I have studied the law. I've studied the prophets. This makes no sense. This can't be true. I don't know what to think. I don't know even what he means by betrayal. I'm just so upset and confused right now. I, Andrew, what do you think? I don't know what to think either. I, I'm so confused by this. I think what we have to do is wait and see if he can tell us more. Jesus, your words surprised me. I didn't expect this. This, this can't be true. When I met you, I was skeptical. Didn't understand. My good friend Philip, he brought me to you. And you said that you knew me before I knew you. How could that be? Again, that makes no sense. Then you said you saw me under a fig tree, a place where we go for quiet, private meditation. There's no way you could have seen me under a fig tree. How did that happen? And that's when I understood you are the Son of God. Yes, I, 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 I'm honest. I'm forthright, frank to a fault, sometimes making people uncomfortable. And I thought I could keep this group here on the right path as we took your word and down to town. One day we were going to spread your word and there was this big tree as well. 
It bore no fruit. You withered that fig tree. I'm thinking, why would you do that? Why would you wither that fig tree? And then you made the statement, if you have faith and never doubt, you can move mountains. And then I thought, well, let alone this little fig tree. But what made sense to me was faith means different things to different, to different groups, to different people. The faith of a zealot, the faith of a tax collector, the faith of one who constantly questions what we do, the faith of a leader, the faith of a follower, the faith of those who are headstrong almost all the time. Then I understood the meaning behind why we were together as a group. I know I, I was just a simple fisherman when we first met. Gave that all up to follow you. A lot of us were fishing. But very, very interestingly, there was a wise person that once asked me, do you believe everything he says? And I said, yes, I do. Then I thought, as we're talking right now, do I believe everything you say? Maybe not. Does that make me a betrayer? Is there betrayal in me? I also say no. I know we have so much more to do, and I certainly know the betrayer is not a Betrayal? What does that even mean? What form will it take? Will, will someone literally stab you in the back? Or will one of us have a lapse of faith? Will it be intentional? Or will one of us unknowingly do this? Take, for example, Matthew. He used to associate with those Roman dogs. Might he say something to them that will betray you? Could I be the one? I know in the beginning, I was skeptical. I was not vocal about it like Thomas, but I would often silently question your words. And your miracles, well, there were times I would question those too. I would see you heal someone and I, and I would wonder, well, was that person really all that sick to begin with? And then of course, some that you chose from this group, I wasn't sure about that either. Don't get me wrong, I agree with Simon and I hate the Romans too and their taxes, it's theft but I thought his inclusion would bring us unwanted attention. And Matthew, ha, I cannot believe you brought that Roman collaborator into this group. And then there were times where I just felt like the other James. I felt forgotten about. But all of that changed. It all changed the day we were out in the boat together. We were out in the water and you had stayed on shore. And we ended up in the middle of the water. And you came to us by walking on the water. There was no doubting that, and that was a turning point for me. In that moment, I vowed to myself, I vowed to myself that I would put my faith in you and do my best every day to live and spread your message. And every day since then, that's what I've done. Now, I still have my weak moments. I'm still not perfect. I, I, I still make mistakes, like when Judas when he protested Mary using that expensive oil on you. I agreed with him. I cannot believe that woman wasted it that way. But then you corrected us. You told us to leave her alone and that she should be glorified and that it was for your burial. Will this betrayal lead to your death? No, Lord, do not let that happen. You of all people, you must know who it is. Tell Peter or tell Simon, he will take up his sword again and protect you. Lord, since that day on the boat, I have lived every day by your teachings and done my very best to do that. And every day my faith has grown. Know this, Lord, it would never be I. My Lord, it is I, Andrew. 
I do hear these words that you speak of betrayal, but I do not understand. So to try to figure it out, I'll go back in time. You know that my family has always been fishermen, so I too became a fisherman. But I must admit, I wasn't a very good one, and I didn't even like fishing. So whenever I got a chance, I would go out into the wilderness, and I would pray, and I searched for something, not always knowing what it was going to be. But I found John the baptizer, and I followed him for a long time. He baptized me. He often told us that there would be a prophet who would come in the future. Then one day, by the River Jordan, he pulled you out of the crowd. He even asked me to help baptize you. When he introduced me to you, I knew that you were the Messiah. You took your time with me. We spent an entire day, you teaching me how to pray and about your father's words. After that day, I was so excited. I couldn't wait to go home and tell everyone about you. I went to my brother, Simon, first and said, Simon, I have found him. Follow me. When I brought him to you, the first thing you said to us was, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. There was no doubt in our minds that that was the right thing to do. So we followed you. We have been with you now for almost three years. During that time, I've seen so many amazing things. I've seen you heal the sick, feed and clothe the poor, raise people from the dead, and the lepers. None of us would go near them, but you went to the lepers and you cured them as well. Another thing that always amazed me. The future ahead is fearful for me. I don't know what's going to happen. But when you say a betrayer could be among us 12, I look at these men and I don't see anyone that would do anything to harm you. I, I can't find anyone like that. But I can assure you, your betrayer will not be I. I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. How can he say that? How can he even know? James, you're closer to Jesus than the rest of us. Has he said anything about this to you? No, but he has been hinting about some things to come. My Lord, I said it can't be that one of us would betray you. And then I couldn't believe that you would, could even know these things ahead of time. But then, now that I have a chance to think about it, you, being who you are, would have that knowledge. And I, Philip, have already betrayed you. When I told you that we couldn't possibly feed the 5,000 with our meager resources, I betrayed you. I betrayed myself. I let my faith be compromised by the sheer impossibility of feeding all those people. Even after seeing you perform so many miracles, I still did not think it could be done. I've seen you heal the sick, turn water into wine, raise someone from the dead, and I still could not bring myself to believe. If I have doubts, even after being with you, learning from you, 
seeing for myself who you are, how hard must it be for someone else who doesn't know you to believe? Perhaps, perhaps it is just a, as a, as a faith as of a mustard seed. But that faith I apparently do not have. I have shown myself to be capable of betraying. Have I not yet learned my lesson about you? Am I going to betray you again? Lord, is it I? Rabbi, your words, look at what they've done to all of us at this table. When you said that, everybody looked down quietly, thinking, wondering if there was something inside them where we have fallen that far short that you could possibly see it as a betrayal. And yes, I did the same, Lord, and, and you know that I do fall short as well. But you know when you called me, you knew I was a thinker, a questioner, that I need to see things and experience them to truly believe. And you've given us plenty to see and experience. We've seen you heal blind. We've seen you restore hearing to the deaf. You've cleared the skin of lepers. We've seen you drive out evil spirits in your Father's name. And we witnessed you raising your friend Lazarus back from the dead. I remember when we were getting ready for that trip up to Bethany, we had heard the news. And, and you said that you were glad for our sakes that it had happened like that, so that you were not there, so that we may come to believe. And at the time, we did not know what you were speaking of. So we made the tre trek up to Bethany, and Martha was there. She met us. And her words still stick with me, because she said, whatever you ask of your father, he will grant that to you. And then it was clear that we knew what you were going to do. Not one of us had thought about that on this trip, that you could possibly raise your friend from the dead. It's very convicting that none of us could have come up with that and realized what you were about to do. So we all have so much more to learn, and I know we we, we fall short so many times. But even having said that, you know that I am committed to you. I was ready to die with you on that road. We know how dangerous things are becoming for you. I'm committed to you to the end. Wherever that takes us, I've left everything behind, and I have nothing to return to. But Rabbi, you also sit at this table. And I do wonder, you're constantly defying the authorities. There's a target on your back. You anger the Pharisees every time you cross paths with them. We travel at night, we hide. It's harder and harder to protect you. We know they want to arrest you or do even worse. And so possibly, you f do you feel that you're betraying us? But if your betrayer has to be someone else at this table, then simply name him. We can expel him. Peter or the zealot can take care of that for us. And I say that knowing that even if that person is me. And Rabbi, because of my shortcomings, I do fear that your betrayer is I. Lord, be 
betrayal? Me? It's probably that tax collector, Matthew, or the Judean Judas. Lord, I would surely not betray you. Lord, if you thought I'd betray you, you wouldn't have let me see you perform some of your most important miracles. One of them being when you raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. Everybody was sad because of this death, and you spoke to her and brought her back to life. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Another event that you let me witness was the transfiguration. We walked up that hill to pray, and your clothes turned dazzling white, and you were speaking to Moses and Elijah. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Lord, another reason that I would not betray you is because I'm in your inner circle, your closest group of disciples. Lord, what I'm saying is this betrayer is not I. I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. Peter, we must stop this betrayer. We can't let him get to Jesus. John, has he ever said this before? We must find out what he's speaking of and protect our Lord. Peter, John, I know nothing of betrayal, but admittedly, I've been in a fog lately. Lord, do you really think that one of us would betray you? We've all dedicated our lives to you. Why would any one of us just throw that away? Now, I wouldn't be James, Peter, or I, because we're in your inner circle and most dedicated to you. But that zealot, that tax collector, that Judean, I wouldn't trust them. Lord, you're the Messiah. You can put an end to this, and we don't have to worry about this. I know you're the Messiah, with no doubt. You shone a light down from the heavens, and Elijah and Moses spoke to us. What business would they have speaking to us unless you were truly the Son of God? I used to be known as a son of thunder among the group due to my very bad temper. But now, my brothers know me as the apostle of love. You changed me, Lord, and you can change so many other people for the better. I know the prophecies say that the Son of God will die for our sins, but this is too soon. This can't be happening yet. You still have so much more to do, so many people to heal, so many lives to cure. Lord, I don't know who your betrayer is, but it certainly cannot be I. Jesus, I'm afraid you could be referring to me. Maybe you've given up on me and know that I can't change. But I tell you today, I, Peter, I am your protector. I wish in those days that you never speak my name, Simon, again. I cherish the name you gave me and where you said you would build your church on. And I know I didn't have the faith like my brother Andrew did from the beginning. And I know that my faith has always been questioned. And you remind me that of every day. And I'm confused now with this faith in my heart that I'm not sure I understand what you mean. But I, knew, I do know the day you came to my boat along the shore and you said these words that I became a true believer. You said, come, follow me, and I will make you a fisher of people. Lord, I have seen all your miracles and have seen all your teachings. I do owe you for healing my mother-in-law. I've seen you heal the sick, open the eyes of a blind man, and even raise our friend from death. But to still say that someone among us could betray you? Lord, reveal this serpent! And I will take this blade, and I will end this betrayal, even if it's my own life. How could you let this happen? You are the Son of God. Even I am afraid of what you do and what you say. Lord, forgive me. 
for again I speak with anger. I am glad that this is between you and I. I do not want the brothers here to ever see the anger that I have and to know that I'm afraid of what you say. I think it's, I still am confused that this betrayer could be I. I look back to the day that you were walking on the water and I asked you to call for me. Of course, I did what I always did, think about myself and with quick tongue spoke before thinking. I jumped out into the water and I was walking on the water and then I felt the wind and then I seen the waves and I began to get afraid and I started to sink. And even you said, Simon, your faith is small. But you still reached out to me and picked me out of the water. And we both walked back to the boat. And I knew then in my heart that I would follow you anywhere, even if it was your death. Lord, we have so much more to do. Could this betrayer you speak of have anything to do with your death? I know that I feel sometimes that I'm, I'm not worthy to be with you and I question my faith. But I tell you the truth, that faith that you've given me has made me more of a caring man and a much better leader. I tell you, I will never deny or betray you. If I am this serpent you speak of, then strike me down, cut out my tongue, strip me of my eyesight, and even end my life. But if I, Peter, am not this betrayer, then you must reveal him to me so I can protect you. Lord, I tell you the truth. This betrayer you speak of could never be I. Jesus, I have a lot to say. But I gotta start by apologizing. You see, I haven't been myself lately. It's probably because of the lack of sleep. I've been having these nightmares, these dark and dreadful nightmares. Though they, they don't start out too dark. In fact, it starts with a bright light, and then a beautiful angel appears. And she's just kind of hovering over me, smiling. And for a moment, it's very serene. Then suddenly, she just starts screaming this painful, agonizing, horrid scream. And I, I can't figure out why until I see the flames. And then the screaming gets louder and more agonizing. And then this transformation happens. Suddenly, this beautiful angel just starts to turn into this gruesome, demonic dragon thing. A dragon with seven heads. And then the screams, they, they turn to laughter. This angry and deep laughter. And I could barely look, but I, the second I catch a glimpse 
it turns all of its heads and it looks right at me. And that's when I wake up in a pool of sweat. It doesn't speak to me much, Lord, but it did mention it comes to you in your dreams as well, even conferred with you out in the desert. I'd certainly love to know what that was all about. Have you discussed this with Peter? You need to be discussing these things with me and not him. The master plan does not involve him. It involves me and you, and it has nothing to do with betrayal. For he who betrays the Son of Man May it be better he were never born. But listen, Lord, we need a different strategy here. You've been making very bizarre decisions lately. Washing dirty feet with expensive perfume, that was just the final straw for me. I mean, it's not even about the money, and, and you know, you know my feelings about money. But it's more of, it makes you look weak and soft. It makes us all look weak. Meanwhile, the Roman Empire, they're getting stronger and larger. Why aren't we doing anything about that? Why aren't we rising up? I'll tell you why. These men, these men right here at this table, these men that you chose, they're all weak and pathetic. What do I have to do, Lord? Should I flip this table over the way you did at the temple? Will that light a fire in your heart? I need to be more involved in the decision making from here on out. Because the dark angel is growing impatient with us. And I'm going to fix things for him. For us. Because that's what I do. That's what I am. I'm a fixer. Not a betrayer. So this betrayer you speak of is definitely not I. John, ask him which one he means. Lord, who is it? It is the one to whom I will hand this piece of bread after I have dipped it in the dish. Surely not I, Rabbi. You yourself have said it. What you're about to do, do quickly. And it was night.
Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. In this meal we are about to receive, your son established a new covenant for all people. And in the washing of feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of your life in faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand in body or spirit as you are able. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment now to share a sign of the Lord's peace.
Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here among us, among, come among us and feed us with this body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to the It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to know the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, we join and pray. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it next to you in my Father's kingdom. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here is the food for the journey. Come, eat, and drink. As we receive the bread and the wine, I invite you to come forward at the direction of the ushers. There will be uh, two uh, chalices with wine on either side of me. I will place a piece of bread in your hand. You will go to one side or the other to receive the wine. There are little cups for you to have if you prefer grape juice that is in the center in the little purple cups. And if you need a gluten-free wafer, please just say so and we have those available too.
Please stand in body or spirit as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in a way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <laughs> 